I wanted to talk about something that I think holds a lot of principles of economics students back, and that is understanding the difference between a change in demand and a change in quantity demanded, or a change in supply and a change in quantity supplied. Uh, this is something that I know probably every economics professor um, talks about this in class, and I certainly do in my principles of macro classes and my principles of micro classes. But I've also realized that over the years, a lot of students, even though they have heard me, I've had several students that have heard me say this in multiple different classes and still a lot of times run into problems with understanding the difference. So let's start by thinking about a difference between um, or, or understanding what a change in quantity demanded is. So if you think about the, the phrase quantity demanded, um, if you watch my videos, you know that I use QD um, to stand for a change in quantity demanded. So you can see I've got that right back there on the left. Um, a change in quantity demanded, quantity demanded, remember, is the number of units that buyers are willing and able to buy at a particular price. Now we've got price up there on the vertical axis. And so if we change that price, um, then consumers are going to want, or let's think about a consumer. The consumer is going to want to buy a different number of units. So if, for example, we were to start at P1 in that picture, um, we can see that Q1 is the number of units that um, buyer the buyer is wanting to buy. If we lower price to P2, the consumer wants to buy more units. So all other things equal, the lower the price, the more units consumers want to buy and vice versa. The higher the price, the fewer units that consumers want to buy. And because we've got price up there, when price changes, because we've got it on the vertical axis, we simply move to a new point on the demand curve. Now that is very different from a change in demand. So when we talk about a change in demand, what that represents is a, a complete shift in the demand curve. So you can see on the right there, I've got a change in demand. So um, if, for example, demand were to increase, like in that picture, then at every price, the consumer is going to want to buy more units than before. Now, a lot of times students will understand this, um, at least understand the difference between these two pictures. And, and let me go back for a second and say the reason that the picture on the left is different from the picture on the right. On the left, what we've got is a change in the price that moves us along a demand curve because price is on the vertical axis. On the right, what would cause a change in demand would be one of the determinants of demand, right? Those are things like changes in income, or changes in the prices of related goods, or a change in your preferences, or a change in your expectations about the future. Or if this was a market demand curve, it would be a change in the number of buyers in the market. Um, so because it's something other than price, then it's going to shift that whole curve. Okay? So this is the idea um, that's similar if you've had an algebra class and instead of having P and Q up there, you've got X and Y. Well, if you change X, you move to a new point on the function, but the whole function doesn't shift. It's the exact same idea. And all of this pertains to a change in supply versus a change in quantity supplied. Change in quantity supplied is um, two points on a single supply curve. A change in supply is the whole supply curve shifting because one of the determinants of supply changed. So remember the determinants of supply are, are changes in input prices or changes in technology or changes in um, the prices of, of other things that the seller can produce or um, changes in seller's expectations or changes in the number of sellers in the market. Now, so... A lot of students understand this. And if I were to put these two pictures on the board, students could very easily pick out um, a change in demand versus a change in quantity demanded or a change in supply versus a change in quantity supplied. It's not really until you start to add the demand curve and the supply curve together that you start to realize that students get confused there. So let me show you something that's a little bit different 
So if we were to, I've misplaced my marker, there it is. Let's suppose we were to uh, draw a picture of a demand curve and supply curve together. So here's our equilibrium right there at the intersection. I'm not gonna worry about labeling my equilibrium price and quantity, but let's talk about what happens if one of those curves shifts. So let's suppose that demand increases, okay? So let's suppose maybe this is a, um, a good, that's a normal good and consumer incomes go up. So we get a shift to the right of that demand curve. We get a new equilibrium right up there. I'm gonna label my initial equilibrium A my new equilibrium B. Now notice what's happened in that picture. Demand has changed, but notice what happened to supply. Supply did not change, but something related to supply changed. What happened is that demand increased, and now we're at a new point on the same supply curve. That means the quantity supplied has gone up. That demand increase causes a change in quantity supplied, okay? If we were to draw a change in the supply curve, if I was, were to increase supply or decrease supply, we would see that that moves us to a new point on our original demand curve. So any change in supply causes a change in quantity demanded. Now, you could have a change in demand and a change in supply in the same picture. We're not gonna worry about that right now. The key here is just to try to keep straight the difference between moving along a curve, a change in quantity demanded or quantity supplied versus the whole curve shifting, change in demand or change in supply. What I tend to see is that students um, a lot of times will miss, um, they'll describe it wrong. So if I have say a problem on a test and you have to describe what's happened in the picture, a lot of times that's where it gets revealed that students are still confused about what a change in demand is versus a change in quantity demanded. So hopefully this helps you uh, keep them straight. Um, good luck in your classes and um, I will see you in another video.